everybody and welcome back. So today I've got a bunch of healthier desserts or dessert themed breakfast recipes to share with you. Sort of a part three to, to these two videos here. Just like last time, some of these recipes are more uh, clean than others, some are a bit more indulgent, um, but overall I'd say they're all pretty good for you, packed with nutritious ingredients, they're all naturally sweetened. That being said, if you ever want to have quote-unquote unhealthy things for breakfast, absolutely go for it, have fun. Um, I feel like food is all about balance and eating what makes you feel good, eating intuitively. Sometimes that's a green smoothie and sometimes it's a, it's a vegan grilled cheese. This soft serve vegan ice cream tastes so much like Afaelo. I'm I'm not kidding. This recipe starts the night or day before. First off, you'll need the cream from one can of coconut milk. You want to go for full fat with a high coconut to water ratio. Mine said on the packaging that it's 90% coconut. That's that's perfect. Add it to the food processor. I know I still managed to add quite a bit of water here, um, but that's okay. Also add white almond butter, thick vegan yogurt, a pinch of salt, maple or rice syrup, or you could also do powdered sugar if you don't mind, since that melts nicely as well. And now blend! You can also just whisk everything up by hand, by the way. If you happen to have an ice cream maker, pour this into the machine now and let that churn. I don't have one, and I'm sure most people don't, um, so go ahead and pour the liquid either into an ice cube tray or into little silicone molds of some sort. Now carefully place these into the freezer to freeze until solid for at least four hours, I'd say. But yeah, you can just leave it in there overnight. The next day, place the frozen ice cream cubes into a high-speed blender or food processor and blend. If your blender comes with a temper, then definitely use that to push the, the, the frozen bits down while it's blending. If your machine is struggling a bit, you can add a tiny bit of water, but the ice cream will turn out more thin and melt faster if you do choose to add more liquid to it. Still gonna be yummy though. Serve immediately, perhaps with some more white almond butter, some roasted crushed almonds, um, and or desiccated coconut. Feel free to add some oats as well to make this more suitable for breakfast. Um, and that's it. I haven't done a recipe for overnight oats in forever, it feels like. This one here is kind of inspired by mil Millionaire's Shortbread, just minus the crunch. So the bottom layer is just a simple mix out of um, small cut oats, salt, vanilla, chia seeds. Thick vegan yogurt and oat milk. Feel free to place this mix into a glass jar. It's just for aesthetics. You can totally just serve everything in the bowl you've just used. So yeah, whether bowl or jar, just place this into the fridge for a bit while you work on the next two layers. So the second layer is going to be a classic date caramel. So to a food processor, you're going to add lots and lots of soft, squishy dates. If yours aren't already soft, then place them in a bowl and cover them with hot boiling water, letting them sit for about 10 minutes and then drain them. Blend up the dates together with some non-dairy milk. This is a lot more date caramel than what we need for one serving of oats, so you can keep the rest in the fridge um, for up to a week and use that to sweeten other things with. Add a couple tablespoons of the caramel, 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 um, on top of your oats. And then last but not least, pour over a thin layer of dark chocolate. Something like 70% is best, I would say, since, you know, the date layer is gonna be pretty, pretty sweet. You need something, like, bittersweet to to balance that sweetness out. Leave your jar of oats in the fridge overnight, or for a few hours at least, and that is it. All right, let's move on to this sweet and salty coconut brown rice with mango, which is simply just a little twist on Thai sticky rice. It's really easy to make, but it does take a little bit of time. This first part can be done the night before. Add your brown rice and water to a small to medium sized saucepan and bring the heat to high. Then reduce the heat to medium low and let this simmer for about 40 minutes or until the rice is cooked through and has um, soaked up all the liquid. 
Grab a second saucepan and add some coconut milk. This time you don't want it to be separated. So if that's the case, just warm it up briefly and whisk it back together again to a small saucepan um, or even just a bowl since we don't need to boil this part. Add about a third of a cup of the coconut milk, a generous pinch of salt and some coconut sugar or maple syrup. Give it a quick whisk and set that aside. Once the rice is cooked through, turn off the heat and pour over the sweet and salty coconut milk mix. Cover it with a lid again and then let it sit for about 20 minutes or just leave it like so overnight. And then just before you're ready to serve, you're gonna put together a coconut cream sauce. So first off, you'll need to create a quick cornstarch slurry out of cornstarch and water, mixing that until there's no lumps left. And then you add that to a saucepan with some more coconut milk, salt, and maple syrup. This time, you have to bring it up to a boil to activate the starch. Whisk it well as it's simmering for about two to three minutes or until it has a nice and thick cream-like consistency. Fluff up the coconut brown rice using a fork, cut up some mango and serve. It goes rice, mango, coconut cream sauce and sesame seeds. Yum, it's so good. It's really cozy, but still quite summery at the same time. This next recipe is for a quick little carrot shake without frozen bananas. Once again, you gotta prep some things the night before. Let some cashews and pitted dates soak in some water. Also chop up one apple into slices and place those slices into a freezing bag or, you know, wrap them up in some parchment paper and let them freeze overnight. The next morning, grab one to two carrots and peel them. Um, if you prefer, you don't have to peel them. And then chop them up into chunks. It's actually ideal if your carrots are a bit soft this time. To the blender, add your carrot chunks, the soaked and drained dates and cashews, either some vegan cream cheese, vegan yogurt, or vegan sour cream, some orange zest or lemon zest also works, lots of cinnamon and salt, also some oats and also maybe some walnuts. I didn't add any, but I always associate carrot cake with walnuts, so it, it makes sense to me adding some of those. Anyway, this makes enough for one big shake or two little ones. Uh, yeah, enjoy! Last but not least, we've got this beauty here, a delicious chocolate and coffee spelt cake. It's surely not gonna be as healthy as green juice, but comparing it to other chocolate cakes, it's definitely on the on the less indulgent side. In a large mixing bowl, quickly mix together some light spelled flour, coconut sugar, unsweetened cacao powder, baking powder, and salt. This is gonna be a one bowl cake, so just add your wet ingredients to the dry ones. Some strong coffee, which can be supped for plant milk if you don't wanna use coffee. I actually did half and half here, so half coffee and half milk. If you want, you can also just add coffee for a more intense coffee flavor. Also add apple cider vinegar. A little bit of vegetable oil goes in here as well. Otherwise, the cake will just come out super gummy, if that makes any sense. We don't want that. Also some applesauce and a bit of maple, rice or date syrup. Mix this all up until smooth. Divide the batter evenly between the two cake tins and place them into the oven to let them bake for around 25 minutes. Blend up all the ingredients for the frosting, the drained and boiled cashews, some thick plain soy yogurt, some maple syrup, unsweetened cacao, and if you wish, a shot of espresso or a couple tablespoons of strong instant coffee. Only add the frosting once the cakes have cooled completely. For some reason, I did not make a giant mess frosting the cake this time. It's probably because I just left out the sides. Add about half in between the cakes, then about half on top, and finish everything off with a dusting of unsweetened cacao powder. You know, baking cake for breakfast, it's not really done in five minutes. So feel free to just do all this the night before also. It's a very nice and calming thing to do before going to bed. So I would absolutely recommend you do that. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this selection of uh, make ahead breakfast dessert recipes. Is there a specific dessert recipe that you're like, 
I would love to see a healthier version of. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you so much for 500,000 subscribers. Absolutely insane. I so appreciate you guys. You have no idea. Hope you have a good week. Bye.